Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest. Construct smallest number from the DI string. The problem states that you are given a string pattern of length n and this pattern string will only contain character i and d. So you need to, per you need to form a array num with this pattern string such that nums of i is less than nums of i plus 1 if pattern of i is equals to capital I. And similarly, nums of i should be greater than nums of i plus 1 if pattern of i is equals to d. So there is one more constraint where is they are saying that we can't use one character more than once. So this is an interesting constraint. Uh, I will encourage you to think about the solution if this constraint was not there. And let me know in the comment section. For now, this constraint is there. And we need to return the lexicographically smallest possible string num that met all the condition. So let's start. Uh, let's start the solution. So the solution Again, uh, as always, let's try to simulate the problem first. And as discussed, we will be solving the original question. That is, we will not be using more one, one digit more than once. So for this problem, you can assume that there are like 10 is also a digit, 11 is also a digit, but this long string would not be given. I am I have taken this just for simplicity and explanation purposes. So let's start. Now we need to perform, we need to follow these two criteria. Pattern of i is, if it is equals to i, we need nums of i less than nums of i plus 1. And if it is d, nums of i should be greater than nums of i plus 1. So let's, uh, we need to perf we need to find out the lexicographically smallest possible string, right? So let's try that. And what is the smallest possible string? This is the smallest possible string, right? So this, let's say this is uh, our pattern array. So this is this will be the lexicographically smallest possible string, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? So now this string is not satisfying this condition. So here it is increasing. So OK, this is increasing. This is increasing. So this is increasing. That's fine. This also satisfies. This also satisfies. But this doesn't satisfy. Like it should, it says that phi, like whatever comes here should be greater than whatever comes here, but this is not currently satisfied. So this, this smallest string is not the answer. Now let's just take, like, this is the first place where it is not satisfied, right? So let's just take this string and try to find the answer for this string only. So we know up till here, everything is satisfied, right? Only thing where it doesn't satisfy is this d wherein it is saying that whatever should whatever comes here should be greater than whatever comes here and you need a lexicographically smallest string up till here so what is the best that you can do again if you remove like if you swap one with two three or four then that string would be larger than this string Similarly, if you swap these two with three or four, that string would be larger than this current string. So what you eventually want is you want to keep the prefix exact as far as you can, because let's say you remove this three to four, then no matter what you do, this string, like whatever string that you will form is already lexicographically larger than the upper string. So in a way, what you will try to do is to keep the prefix intact as long as you can. So what is the best way you can see here? The best way is to just swap these two, right? So if, if we swap these two, this will become six and this will become five and this condition would be satisfied. So that's what we have done. And this condition is satisfied. So this is the lexicographically smallest string. Now let's just move forward. Let's say, uh, let, let's take, let, uh, let's take uh, one more character into consideration. Okay. So we will 
now include this as well so up till here and up till here so again this is satisfied but again this is not satisfied 5 is not greater than 7 again what you will want to do is you want to keep the prefix intact as long as you can so again you will say that okay this is decreasing so let's just uh, swap these two to make it uh, to make satisfy this condition so uh, we will remove this 5 we will put 7 here and we will remove this 7 and put 5 here right now once we do that this is something that is again not satisfied so to satisfy that the same of the same approach you would want the largest prefix to be intact so simple simply you can just swap these two so this would be swapped with this and this would become seven this would become six and this will remain five here so now you can see this prefix like this uh, entire string is again satisfying this pattern and is the lexicographically smallest string so let's just move forward and let's take one more uh, one more character into consideration and uh, this time again this is d so this should be greater which again is not there so again simply what you can do you can just swap this 5 and 8 once you swap 5 and 8 this string would become like this 6 and 8 pair would become uh, not satisfied like this 6 would not be greater than 8 so you would again want to swap this 6 and 8 right so let's just take let's just do that so let's say you remove this 5 you put 8 here and you put 5 here okay so this is 8 now now you because 6 is not greater than 8 you again swap it so notice that we are swapping because we want prefix to be intact as long as we can right so that's why we are swapping from the last so that prefix will remain intact so again this condition is not satisfied so we will just swap these two as well so 8 and 7 so if you notice this closely what is happening is as you are taking a series of d's you are just swapping like you are just reversing that part of the array so initially it is 5 6 7 8 and now it becomes 7 8 7 6 5 so you can take this uh, take this example and uh, perform the same operation for one more character and you will notice that it happens with that character as well so in a way what we are doing is as a, as long as there is a sequence of d right you will just reverse that part of the array and that would actually give us our answer so hope this point makes sense so that's just that's the solution it's very simple we just started with simulating the problem so problem asked us to find out the lexicographically smallest string we started by enumerating the lexicographically smallest string and then we want to keep this string smallest and we apply over one operation at a time by keeping that in by keeping that in mind that we want this string to be lexicographically smallest and hence we want the prefix the longest prefix to remain intact so that's where we start doing the operation from the from the ending part and we notice that there is a pattern we as long as there is a d we are just like just uh, reversing that part of the array will give us the lexicographically smallest pattern like array which will satisfy this pattern so hope this solution is clear let's just look at the code uh, once so the code is again very simple we started by filling the array with j plus one like one one two three four five six and then we find out what is the longest pattern that exists so by like this loop will just find out this things this i this d's and then this d this i so this loop will do that now if 
this is a pattern of D, like this is sequences of D. So what we want, we want to reverse that particular piece of the array. So it start with this index. So we start with this and it ends with J. So we need to reverse one more. So notice that this pattern is in between the numbers, right? So what, wherever it starts with, we need to reverse one more. So this like if it starts with here, we will start with here. That is fine, but we will end after this. So one more index and this reverse function would require one index as one one index more as well. So that's where J plus two. So once this loop is done, this answer array would contain the exact sequence that we would require and we'll just print that like we just return that in the specified format. So hope this solution makes sense. Let me know if you have any doubts in the problem. Also, I would again encourage you to think about the solution where this constraint is not there. It's just, it is quite interesting. And uh, we, like, if you think about it, you will uh, understand how, like how this constraint help us in arriving at this particular solution. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.